Hey everyone, it's Professor Howard. I want to talk a little bit about personality, but specifically personality from the perspective of a behavior analyst or a behaviorist. Uh, it's not uncommon for intro psych textbooks to get behavior analysis completely wrong, and, and I think that this has a lot to do with the history between psychology, psychologists, behaviorists, uh, and some of the political uh, interpersonal history between different fields or different philosophical approaches to understanding people. Now, many intra-psych textbooks will say things like, uh, behaviorists don't believe in personality, or they'll say things like, uh, to a behaviorist, personality is just a series of habits. Now, these statements are neither entirely true, nor are they entirely false. So let's go back for a moment to discuss what we mean by personality. There's lots of different definitions, but the one that we use in my course, General Psychology, is that personality are these long-standing traits and patterns that cause an individual to consistently think, feel, and behave in certain ways. Right now, you can see that what that's doing is saying that there's something about the individual that causes them to, to do things a certain way. You can tell immediately that a behaviorist is probably not likely to buy into ideas of thoughts and feelings because those tend to be private events, and a behaviorist tends to focus on publicly observable phenomena or relations between the environment and behavior. So to some extent, yes, you could argue that a behaviorist would immediately say, well, thoughts and feelings aren't really a thing. But thoughts and feelings are private events. No behaviorist would argue that you don't occasionally think to yourself or that you don't have feelings about things. Those are simply private events, and we don't use them to explain public events. The other place where you would see that a behaviorist would have some trouble with this definition is this idea of a trait, a personal trait. And when you start discussing ideas of traits, we're talking about internal causal variables. There's something about your personality inside you that then manifests as a pattern of behavior. And a behaviorist simply wouldn't ascribe to that notion. Now, does that mean that there's stuff inside you or stuff that you're biologically pre-programmed to do that a behaviorist wouldn't believe in? Of course not. Behaviorists believe that there's a combination of your biological endowment and your environment, and those two factors work together to make who you are. So let me give you an example. We know that children who experience significant abuse or bullying in their teenage years will actually see changes in their neurostructural. So you might find that a person who's experienced you know, significant trauma at a critical period when their brain is developing could be more sensitive to punishment. That means that for that person, punishment is going to be more effective or it's going to drive their behavior more. They're going to be very sensitive to it. Now that's a biological difference, but it developed out of experience. It developed out of that interaction between your biology and the environment. What does that mean for personality? Now a behaviorist is going to absolutely agree that people do things for reasons, but a behaviorist is likely to say that that interaction between your predispositions, right, your biological endowment, your prior learning history, and your current situation is the best description or the best predictor of what you're going to do in the future. Let me give you another example. Uh, imagine that you see me get a cup of coffee Monday morning. You see me get a cup of coffee Tuesday morning. You see me get a cup of coffee Wednesday morning. You'll probably predict that on Thursday morning I'll get a cup of coffee, and the chances are very good that I will get a cup of coffee. Now, if I'm attempting to explain this with a trait, then I'm going to say that I might have a caffeine-seeking uh, personality. But a behaviorist is going to look at this pattern of behavior over time and say, well, based on prior experience, we should predict that in the future this person will do this. And that's what behaviorists think about personality, that when we're trying to describe people, what we're really describing are temporally extended patterns of behavior over time. Right? When we see you do it again and again and again and again, it increases the likelihood that you'll do that particular behavior or behaviors that serve the same function again in the future. What do I mean by function? So why do I drink coffee? 
It could be that I like the taste of coffee, uh, or it could be that there's something very specific about coffee, especially coffee in the morning, that does something for me, that meets a need for me. So imagine coffee Monday, coffee Tuesday, coffee Wednesday, but Thursday, my favorite coffee shop is closed. Instead, I stop at a, a gas station, I buy a Red Bull right? Functionally, that Red Bull is going to contain caffeine, which could serve the same purpose or meet the same need as my coffee did. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to see the same precise behavior again and again and again and again and again over time, but rather you could have a cluster of behaviors that all mean the same thing. When you're nervous, if you bite your nails, but you're in a, a setting where you can't do that, maybe instead you thoughtfully chew on a pen because that looks better or is perceived differently than nail biting, right? They're functionally similar behaviors. So it's not that behaviorists think that personality doesn't exist or that people don't have personality. Rather, we look at personality as being this description of temporally extended patterns of behavior over time. I'm curious what you think. Let me know, and I look forward to your questions.